survivor of domestic violence, severe domestic violence, the, the boyfriend uh, actually tried to strangle her while she was pregnant and um, just basically kill her while she was eight months pregnant and she somehow got away and uh, you know she was she was helped by an amazing gynecologist that supported her and try to help her get out of the domestic violence situation. She paid for her hotel stay and um, this woman, this OBGYN is just amazing, like just God sent to help this woman. And she paid for her to stay in a hotel for two, two weeks, I think. Um, no More Tears helped this woman get, you know, food and basic needs and such. And uh, the, the boyfriend, when he tried to strangle her, he was in jail and um, we were, so it was the, the gynecologist in the car behind me, my photographer friend Lynn um, sitting next to me and uh, basically we were going and the survivor was driving in front of me in a car. We were taking three cars because we were going to load up the cars with this survivor's stuff so she doesn't have to go back there ever again and um, we asked the sheriffs to come uh, because it's, it's dangerous and it was a two mile dirt road there was nothing that that was the only way to enter it and that it was the only way to exit it so we're in the midst of driving there um we're on this dirt road we're in the midst of driving and we find out that uh basically the guy got out on on bail and he's on his way back to the house so um my photographer friend that was volunteering with no more tears that day freaked out i freaked out and basically we had to um turn around and get out but then um we t we were able to get in touch with the sheriff i told i called the sheriff and i said there's no way i'm coming to that property until i see you because i don't know for sure if the sheriff is there or not because i didn't see the sheriff because you couldn't see anything for two miles and then we saw the sheriff and that's when we went in there and um the sheriff was like he knew there was domestic violence going on and he's you know been there before he's been there before he couldn't the sheriff, you know, their hands are tied. If the if the victim is not ready to leave, or is not ready to file a police report, there's not much the police can do. But um, that was a very very scary situation that day because we just we were really afraid when we found out we we're in the midst of getting there and we find out that the guy's on his way back home. And uh, fortunately, we had. Well, what do you think could have happened if he? Had he, first of all, did he, did he get there while you were there? No, we were able to get out before he got there. And, uh, well, I, I just, I mean, this guy tried to strangle this woman when she was eight months pregnant. Um, and the crazy part, the most crazy part, is that this guy is an abuser of another victim that we are already helping. So it's the same abuser, but basically yeah. a new victim. And, um, which has happened in No More Tears before as well because, I mean, you know, if they're, they're beating women, they're not going to change overnight and stop doing it when they get into new relationships or they leave the existing relationship or the victim leaves them. So um, it was just bizarre to be dealing with the ongoing case and then all of a sudden find out that you're helping another woman that's been abused by an existing abuser, an existing victim that you're helping. That's actually his, uh, his wife and um so it was just it was very scary but we've been in these situations before this comes you know the we've received numerous threats and via email and the the tires have been slashed of our car the office too well the office when one of the abusers showed up and and said that you know he had had a gun and he said consider this a warning and um you know next time it's not it's gonna i'm gonna hurt you and that's when we had the office and you know we have young college interns and we don't have any staff but we have volunteers and interns that sit in the office and I was there and it's dangerous so we ended up closing down the office and which is fine because literally half the time I would say 80% of No More Tears' time is used in transporting victims from lawyers, doctors to wherever and to uh, courthouses and hearings and stuff so 
even though the office shut down, I guess it's good because we can save that money and put it back into the organization rather than paying rent. Um, but that part, all of that comes with the territory because we're the enemy because these people are, and we're now also working with human trafficking victims and these people are basically, you know, trying to hurt them and we're rescuing them and getting them out. And so they hate us. They literally hate us and they will see us in the courthouse. Um, for example, one of our board chairs, Dr. Laura Finley, is um, basically a board member and, and our board chair. She accompanied a victim with, um, and the abuser was there, and it was for a restraining order hearing, and the abuser was saying, cursing, just in Arabic, profane, you know, profanities to the victim, and like, they see the board, they see who I am, I'm the founder, it's all on the internet, there's no way to hide from it, there's nothing you can do, and, um, you know, rescuing victims of domestic violence or human trafficking victims, the danger aspect of it comes within the mission itself. There's no way that you can, you know, take that out from the mission because you're dealing with psychotic people. I mean, only really, really unwell, sick, crazy people go around beating women or children or sexually abusing children or physically abusing children, you know. So you're not dealing with normal, normal people. They're not normal functioning individuals. And that's why they can do anything at any point if they snap. So that comes with the mission. There's nothing you can do about that. You just kind of hope for the best and, and pray and just make sure that you look around your surroundings and you're safe. And, you know, I carry mace and stuff, but what else can you do? <laughs> There's not much else you can do.